G'day aspiring engineers. This is the first of 16 basic part tutorials in Fusion 360. It's time to revise that old one. Do you have 20 hours? I'll get you up and running with Fusion 360 so that you can model those basic prismatic and blocky engineering parts that are common to just about every engineering assembly. That would be enough to get you 3D printing your own designs. Then you could go on and learn more. How about assembly modeling like this? or engineering drawings like this? What about engineering product design renderings like this? If you're an inventor, a hobbyist, a backyard maker, a small business, or an engineering student, well, you're in the right place. So now set aside those 20 hours and you know the drill. Subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, and click on that bell for the notifications. Welcome to Future Engineering. The future starts now. Go ahead and download Fusion 360. The free version is just fine and it's the best computer-aided design option on the internet today, bar none. The download link is in the description down below the video here. Show more and uh, here it is. I have the first drawing in Adobe Reader here. I'm just going to keep that on my second monitor. So for this first part, you're going to learn a little bit, and in part two, you'll learn a little bit more. No stress. I won't ask you to memorize anything. Next time, I'll introduce you to some keyboard shortcuts and some other neat tricks that can give you the habits of a power user right from the start. But here's the main thing I want you to get in this first part. We're going to make a sketch, and then we'll extrude the sketch, then we'll make a sketch, and then we'll use the sketch. Got that? So it's a sketch feature workflow. All CAD programs work in a similar way. Don't worry, I'll emphasize this as we go ahead. We really should make a folder and save the document before we get started, but I know you're impatient. Let's get started and we'll come back and do some of these setup tasks at the halfway point. By the way, there is a good way to navigate around this video and that is to mouse over that red line along the bottom of the video and you'll see the tooltips come up. That is the chapter headings. They're also listed in the description down below. So click on here, that's the first button on the far left at the top of the screen in the toolbar, Create Sketch. Notice that when we move the mouse around we see a grid and it lines up with the three reference planes that are connected with the origin. So let's go for that one that is uh, with the blue and the red axis and uh, click while that's available. Notice that it turns to face you, it's a sort of a 2D environment now and the toolbars are different at the top. We're in the sketch mode. We've got sketching tools and uh, some constraints. We'll talk more about these as we go. So first off, click on the two-point rectangle up there near the left and click once down here in the bottom left of the screen. Uh, and uh, notice that we've got two focused fields. Now don't click with your mouse button or anything. Just take your hand away from the mouse. And while the, the horizontal field is focused with the blue color, type in 200 and then press the tab key, not the enter key yet, just press the tab key and that brings the focus to the vertical field. Type in 90 as you can see in your drawing and then press the enter key and that gives you both the horizontal uh, measurement and the vertical measurement and that light blue rectangle has a measurement of 200 by 90. Now we're going to click on the line tool which is the one, one to the left of the two point rectangle, line. Mouse around the top of the rectangle that we've just drawn and you'll notice that the cursor will change to a little X when you're very close to the line. And if you click while that little X is visible, then that's what we want. As you move the mouse around now, you'll see that there's a lot going on, but don't be intimidated by that. Notice that there's a blue focused field for the length of the line, but all we want to do is click when we've got that thing vertical. Notice that it will snap to vertical. We just need to click while it is vertical. Then we'll do another line over towards the right. Notice that we can make it perfectly horizontal if it snaps to the horizontal. Doesn't matter where, just click while it is horizontal. And then another vertical line back to the top of the rectangle. And when that thing snaps to vertical, click again. Now I'm going to click on this trim tool. That is the scissors in the toolbar. And that's the trim tool. When you mouse around the top of the screen here, you'll see that wherever you touch, and you're just going to mouse over these lines, and you'll see that where it turns red, then you click, it will cut that out, which is just what we wanted. Next, 
Here's the dimension tool, and that's in this part of the toolbar, and it's a sketch dimension. Click, and then up here at the top of the sketch here, I'm just going to click once on this line, and then click one more time to place the dimension. Notice that the blue field is focused, and the drawing shows us that that is supposed to be 40. Press Enter, and it will change. Do the same thing over on the other side. You notice that the dimension tool is still active. Click once on the other line at the top of the screen. Move the dimension tool up a little bit and click one more time. We see the focused field. Change that one to 40 and press enter. Next I'm going to click on the horizontal line in the middle of the drawing down here and click again when I hit the base. I'm going to move that over to the left, put it outside somewhere where I can see it, and this one is now focused, and we can change that to 50 as the drawing shows us. Press Enter, and that's enough for now. We have a button up here that says Finish Sketch. I'm going to click on Finish Sketch, and notice that the little profile that we've just drawn has now turned to a sort of an isometric view, and we're back in Feature Mode. We were in Sketch Mode, which was 2D, now we're in the 3D Feature Mode. Up here, next to the Create Sketch icon, there's one called Extrude. Mouse around until you see the little tooltip that says Extrude. Click on the tool and you'll see that the Extrude dialog box opens. And the focus field here is for profiles, the profile that we just drew in the sketch mode. There's an arrow there. Grab that arrow and you can see that you can drag that backwards or forwards, take it back a little way, the field focuses and you'll see from the drawing that we should type in 40 and it updates. Click OK and that much has been done. Right, we're at the halfway point here. Now let's do some of those setup jobs that we should have done at the beginning and then we'll complete this part. Open up the data panel and click on New Project and give it a name, something like 16 parts. And we'll come back to that when we're finished. Click on Hide the Data Panel. Turn on the origin of the document. The little eye with a line through it is the thing that turns on the visibility of the origin. First thing we should do is save the document. There's the Save icon up above in the far top left. Give this thing a name. Let's call it Part 1. And we'll put this in 16 parts. And save it. Notice that the top of the tree takes on the name of the document, and the name of the document is part one, as you can see at the top. One more thing we should do, and that is right-click on the top of the tree, make sure that you've got Capture Design History clicked, so that when you make a feature, it shows up in the timeline down below. Here's something everybody wants to know, and that is how to move the model around on the screen. Well, down below, we've got a navigation toolbar at the bottom of the screen, in the middle, and there's a button there at the far left of it called Orbit. Click on that one and then move the mouse within that little circle on the screen that appears and then click and drag and you'll be able to reorient the model the way that you like it just in the view. And then you'll find that uh, if you use the scroll button then interesting things can happen. But one thing that often happens to a new user is that the model will go off the screen and you get lost and you don't know what to do. And so what you do is you go up to where the view cube is and there's a little house there. That's the home button. Hit on the home button and your model will come home. Uh, that's always a handy one to know. Uh, there's also this one here called look at and you can click on the look at tool and then any face that you click on will turn to face you. Let's go back to home. Let's do that one more time. On this side one for instance and the side turns to face you. Back to home. Okay you should be able to get around okay using those few tricks. Just have a little bit of a practice. Right, the next thing we're going to do is some features. We're in the feature creation mode at the moment. And you'll see that on the modify part of the toolbar, there's one there that's called fillet. Move the mouse and read the tooltips and you'll find the fillet tool in the modify part of the toolbar. The fillet dialog box opens and we need to select a few edges. Now don't select the... I'm going to undo that. This time I'm going to select just these edges. You can see which ones I'm selecting here. There's one that's not visible, so I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button to turn the model around a little bit so that I can see it. Select that other internal edge. and You'll see that we now have six edges selected and there's a focused field here and the drawing tells us that those six edges 
need to have a radius of 10 and so I type in 10 then press enter and those six edges are applied. Now there's two more fillets to be done on this model so I'm going to click on the fillet tool one more time. The fillet tool opens up again and these ones have a different radius so I'll select those ones. There's an edge down there at that corner. I need to turn the model around a little bit to see the other one and I'll select the second one. Now there's two that are selected. Type in the 15 and press enter. And so now the fillets are applied. Now we need to make another sketch to complete our model. And so here's this create sketch button. Click it. And now as we mouse around over the model, you see that any face that we mouse over is possible to draw a sketch on but the one that we want to make our sketch on is at the front of the model on this large flat face. Click while the, the grey grid is visible make sure that it's not the top face it's this front face. Then the model turns to face us and we've got the sketch tools available for us again plus there's another important toolbar here called constraints and we'll come to that shortly. So in the create part of the toolbar there's a circle. Now click once on the circle tool and I'm just going to put a circle over here somewhere and another one over here somewhere. It doesn't really matter it's whereabouts you draw those two circles. Now that I've got two there, I'm going to click on the sketch dimension tool. I'm going to click once on the circle. It pre-highlights to a darker blue. Click once to start the dimension tool and click outside. The diameter of this one, according to the drawing, is 15. Type in 15 in the blue focused field press enter and you'll see that your circle will change. Select the concentric constraint which is in the constraints part of the toolbar. Now you'll notice that the concentric tool is attached to the cursor. So I'm going to click twice on the drawing, once on the circle that I drew a moment ago and then on the fillet, the 15 fillet down in the bottom left corner. And when I click the 15 diameter circle will jump onto the point of origin of the fillet. Now I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to click on the other circle and again on the fillet and then the circle will move to the same point of origin as the fillet. Click on the little equal constraint. Now notice that the cursor has an equal sign on the cursor. Click once on the 15 diameter circle and then on the other circle to change it to the same. Then click on the finish sketch button in the toolbar and we have a more or less isometric look at our part. It's got the sketch visible on the front of the part and what we're going to do now is click on the extrude tool one more time. The extrude dialog box opens. What we need to do is select the profiles for this extrude and that is the two little circles that we've just done. Just select them one after the other and you'll see the little blue arrow that you can drag. We don't want to come out the front, we want to go backwards a bit and the operation needs to be changed from join or intersect. We need to have the operation set to cut and we're going to change the distance, find the extent type, we're going to change the distance to all. Then press OK and that's cut the two holes through the part. Move the part around until you can see through the holes and you'll see that our part is now complete. Let's just save the part one more time by clicking on the save icon. Remember that we've already saved it and uh, let's go and check that it's in the 16 parts folder that we've just, there it is. So leave me a comment in the uh, comments if you're planning to learn Fusion 360. I want to hear from you. Also in the description below the video you'll find the link for the Future Engineering Facebook page. Here's that one. Whenever you get stuck or have a question, this is the best way to show me a screenshot or a screen capture or ask me anything about the tutorials. Everybody gets stuck from time to time with new software, so go there and leave a message just to say hi. Now if anything looks different on your screen, make sure that your preferences are the same as mine. There's a link to another video in the description down here that will go through all of the preferences that I have set on my install of Fusion 360. How'd you go? Wasn't too hard was it? In the next one we'll go a little bit deeper and I'll show you your first keyboard shortcut. You want to form the habits of a power user right from the very beginning. Make a plan to work through all of these 16 basic tutorials and do them once or twice maybe three times each. Now if you run into any problems Take a screenshot or a screen capture 
and go to the Facebook page and then ask questions. Everybody gets stuck with new software. It's just the way it is. Okay, hit the like button for me if you've learned something today and I'll see you next time.